Hi, welcome to another episode of Fresh Off The Dome, and this is another DIY video. And on today's episode, we are gonna be building a plate bed. Ta-da! A plank bed is exactly what it sounds. It is a plank of wood that your mattress goes on top of. So before we start building, I wanted to describe the design and the materials and the tools that you'll be needing and kind of give you an idea of what we're gonna do before we start doing it. So, let's go over the materials. The materials, first of all, are, you'll need eight, eight foot long by eight inches by two inches cedar planks. Now I made out of mine out of cedar. They also have pine and other ones you can buy, but I went with cedar for mine. Also, if you notice that uh, on the bottom, there's three baseboards that we're gonna be making. Those are also made out of plank plank wood, which I'll go over later. So the overall dimensions for the length that we're gonna cut it down to is 96 inches by 64 inches, because there's eight eight inch planks, and then we'll have. Uh, three small baseboards underneath. The material costs are for each of the cedar planks that are coming eight feet by, again, eight feet by two, by eight inches by two inches thick is around $28, $30. So if you get 10 of them, it's about 300. I got 11 of them because I added a baseboard, which you don't necessarily need unless you want. We'll go over that later in the video. Um, so overall, it's about $330, give or take, for the wood alone. I mean, you'll need some screws, which don't really cost much, and then you'll also need some angle pieces, some brace, 90 degree angle braces, if you want to add a headboard. Again, that's only if you want to. So the overall cost of this build is going to be around $350 to $380, which is still not bad, considering that I saw all the plank beds online are going to start off at around $400, and that's for a really cheaply made one. I'm really happy with the way I, mine came out with. It looks nice, it looks quality made, it looks like it's professionally done. So I think overall, even though it's going to cost you about $300, you know, like I said, $380, it's still a good price compared to what the alternative is for a queen size plank bed. With that being said, Today's build is a little bit more difficult than the builds I do. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do it. If you're a beginning builder and you have no idea what you're doing, you can still do this, I guarantee it. It's just take, it's gonna take a little bit of time and patience, but I promise you, if you if you watch the video and take the steps that you can do, it's it, the design itself is very simple. Again, everyone can do it. I just want you all to know that this is gonna be a little bit more difficult of a build. I would say like a seven out of 10 on the difficulty scale for a new beginner. We've gone over the materials, we've gone over the cost. Now we're gonna go over the tools because you're gonna need some tools for this. The main tool that you're gonna need is you're gonna need, <laughs> is you're gonna need a scroll saw. You're gonna need this to cut down the woods to the side, like I said. The planks come in eight feet sections. You're not gonna want an eight feet foot long bed, so you're gonna have to cut it down. The second thing you will need, you will need a palm sander. The good thing about these is you can find a palm sander anywhere. This one was brand new for 30 bucks. You will need a regular drill, of course. You will need a angle grinder. Now I did this one last because this step I added, you do not need to do this step if you don't want to. I like it because it makes it look a little bit more cool. It has a little bit more character. It makes it a little more unique instead of just plain baseboards. You do not need to add this step, so you will not necessarily need this tool. I did it because I think it looks cooler. So this one, you only need if it's, it's if you want to do the full way I did it. But you, like I said, you can change it up. Don't do it. Don't add it yourself if you don't want to. This angle grinder I got it from Home Depot for about thirty bucks as well. You need a wire brush. Now, with that being said, we got the we've got the materials, we've got the tools that we need, we have the design that we have in our head. So it's time to start building. Yay! All right, let's get started. First thing I wanted to do was make the cross beams that go underneath the planks, sort of the base. The things, those are underneath these three strips of wood are underneath the plank. Not only are they gonna hold the bed together, but they're also gonna be the foundation that the boards are gonna lay on top of. So what I have is two two by two strips of wood that are gonna lay across the bottom and I'm gonna drill screws into each one of these to hold the planks on themselves. Problem with having a two by two base strip of wood is that they don't sell 
two by twos very often and they do but they're pretty expensive so in order to get them I just decided to make them uh, what I did is I got these two two by eights and glued them together these are two inches by eight inches so this is eight inches wide or close to it I'm gonna take two by two by two about 54 inches long so 54 inches long by two by two so that's what we started um, the only thing I've done so far that I didn't put on video is I glued these two boards together. Go to any local hardware store, they'll have some sort of wood glue. You place it in between the boards, let it set for about 24 hours, and then they'll be stuck pretty well like this. You clamp them and it's pretty self-explanatory. So now we're gonna get ready to cut out the strips of two by two out of this. All right. I've got my three two by twos marked out on this plank, this two by eight. Important thing is, is that my band saw or my scroll saw only comes out not two inches. So what I'm gonna do is cut one side, then flip it over and cut the other side so I get all the way through the two inches. So for whatever reason, this next section of video, the audio got messed up. So I'm just recording it later. I'm basically just showing you the finest baseboards that I got cut out, the two inch by 56 inch sections that are gonna go on the base, as you see right there. We're gonna use these to screw the plank boards into, which we'll be using later. I just wanted to show you the finished product as we cut it out, and we're gonna get ready to sound down the edges. As I'm pointing out right here, they're a little rough, so we're gonna sand those down next. Now in this very exciting clip, I'm showing you what the original planks look like when we get them when they're eight feet long. And I'm just basically just sell, telling you we're getting ready to come down to the 90 inches that we need them uh, in length for the plank bed. All right, so we've got all our planks cut to size. I wanna show you what they'd look like. It's starting to take a little bit of a shape. Looks like this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look uh, like reclaimed wood, which means we wanna age the wood a little bit, make it look like it's been used before for a long time. We're gonna round the edges, we're gonna give it some marks, a little bit of wear and tear. The way we're gonna age it the most though, make it look like reclaimed wood, is we're gonna use this grinder. We're gonna go across the top, a top layer real easily using this wire wheel on this grinder. It's gonna like rip apart certain areas and make it look really old and aged really quickly. Um, just by making it uneven, giving it a little uh, divots here and there. It's going to look really cool once it's done. I'll show you what it looks like uh, as we go through the process and what it looks like when it's done. <clears throat> All right. We've got our 2 by 4 sanded down looking beautiful. I want to show you what it's going to look like. So just so y'all, if y'all are a little confused, this is going to go across here and it's going to hold everything. I'm going to put screws in the middle. It's going to hold everything together. So that's what it's going to look like. So now that we got these baseboards sanded down, we're gonna stain them and look nice and beautiful. So we've got most of our wood cut down to size. It's now time to start to make it look aged. We're gonna make it look unperfect. We're gonna take gouges out of it. We're gonna make it look scratched up, mostly using this grinder. We're just gonna go up and down the grain of the wood and give it a little imperfections to make it look cool and old. As you see, I've started to do some of them already, just to give you an idea what it looks like. The idea is to give it some texture where it's like notched, it doesn't look exactly perfect. So it looks like we took it from an old project and remade it into this one. So we're gonna show you what that looks like right now. Got all our imperfections in the wood. We grind them all out, it looks something like this. They're still rough. You see with the dust everywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign, sand it down a little bit using the palm sander. So we're just gonna go over it to make it look like those gouges have been there and weren't there on purpose. So you're just gonna take your sander and just kind of go back and forth and not make it even, but you're gonna make it look like it's a smooth.
All right. So I just went over it again with 220 sandpaper to make it look really smooth and really fine. It feels pretty good to the touch. Um, what we're gonna do now is add the clear coat to it to bring out the wood, to stain it, protect it. I'm using this shellac. Uh, it's a clear, it doesn't, color, it doesn't stain the wood either. It just puts a protective coating on it. And all you gotta do is use a rug, dip it in there and go back and forth with the wood. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Like I said, it's not gonna stain it. It's not gonna give it a different color. I want the natural look of the wood and all these like nice little cuts and rivets that I put in there earlier, the stain's gonna get in there. It's gonna give it a nice texture. It's gonna look really cool once it's done. As you can see, the bed behind me is starting to actually look like something. This is actually the bottom. It's flipped upside down. So this is the bottom of the bed that, we look, that we're looking at. And these are the beams, the, the base, those three beams that I made earlier. Um, that we're going to be resting the pillars on top of. Now, as you can see, I put these uh, brackets to give it some extra support to keep them from falling over. I'm also going to drill holes down the middle to hold the boards in place. I'll show you what that looks like. So these are the brackets. I put two on each side of the, the bottom base beams and we're going to drill those in. Be sure to measure them out evenly. You want them to be pretty even so there's no lagging. The cedar the cedar posts are actually pretty thick, so I'm not really too worried about the wood sagging over time, but still you want to make sure you, you don't have too much space in between. That's why I put three instead of two, just to make sure. Time to screw in the rest of the planks. Now I got these wood screws that we're gonna drill in two on each board on each plank for each baseboard. Now before we drill them in, we're not gonna just screw them. We're gonna pre-drill holes so that way we don't split the wood and also it goes in smoother, a lot easier. Now the important thing here is to remember don't drill too far because you don't want to go all the way through the plank and don't get screws that are too long because you don't want them poking out of the other side. The important thing is to remember get screws that are not long enough to go through the completely. We want to have a little bit of space to make sure that's not going to poke out the other end of the board that it's in. So the important thing in this is to remember to get small screws. I'm also going to drill. Be now before I put in the before I put in the screws, I'm going to drill. Oh shit. So other than that, yeah, that's it. Let's get started. Great, so as you can see behind me, the bed frame came out great. I'm really happy with what it looks like. It's sturdy and all around looks nice. It turned out better than I thought it would be. I'm gonna give you a clear, is that beautiful that is? Now, there is one thing I, after spending a few nights on the bed itself uh, that I wanted to add or change to it. I wanted to add a headboard. I noticed that the mattress was getting against the back wall and it was pinching my curtains between the wall and I didn't want it to do that. I, I didn't like that it was pinching it like that and like moving it around. So I was like, let me add a headboard just so uh, to make it look a little bit nicer and to keep the badges from moving all the way back. So I'm gonna do that. With that being said, all I did was uh, go through the same process I did with the baseboards. It's gonna look pretty similar to those. So if you wanna go how I see how I made it, go back to the beginning of the video. I did the same exact steps. Here's what the headboard's gonna look like. It's uh, just cut it down to the uh, same thing as the other ones. I just cut it down to size, uh, grinded a few spots, dents here and there. I don't know if you can see that. And then uh, sanded it and coated it with clear coat. So it's gonna look really nice. It's gonna match the bed perfectly and everything. Uh, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna attach it when it comes to that. It's basically, I got eight of these brackets. I don't know if you see that very well. And all they're going to do is attach to this and then we're going to come and attach it underneath the base of the board. I'll show you more detail what it's going to look like and how that works because that's going to be the hardest part. When I got ready to put the headboard on the bed itself, I did notice a problem. I'm going to show you what that problem is right now. 
we can fix it. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a little bit of a pain in the butt, but not really. All right, the problem is, I don't know if you can see that, is that this board, see how they're all a little bit uneven? It's fine, that's the way I wanted it. I know I wanted it to look like it was recycled wood, so it's not gonna look perfect. I wanted to have those dents and those curves and those notches like that. But the problem is over here, this one comes up a little bit higher than I would like it to. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna sand it down because I'm gonna be having the headboard laying on top of this and I want it to be kind of flush because I don't want the headboard to be crooked. So this, I want this to lay flush on that and at least be kind of straight. See how it's like wiggling like that? I don't want that. So I'm just gonna sand down these edges a little bit, re-sand re it down and then re-clear coat it and I just want to take it to where it's not doing that. I want it to just at least kind of lay flat. So that's the only problem that we came across. I'm gonna do that now, just sand it down and give it a nice little base for this headboard. Now that we got it all sanded down and evened out, it's time to put the brackets on. Now, how we're gonna put the brackets on is very simple. We've got an L-shaped bracket. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this L-shape and we're gonna slide the bottom underneath and have this top part sticking out that's gonna go in the headboard. Now, I know it's only sticking out a little bit, but I'm gonna have, so I'm gonna have eight of them. One for every single board. I'm gonna have eight of them, and that'll be enough to support the board, the headboard itself. So this is what the final product looks like. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. Put a few lights underneath, the string lights underneath my mattress. But yeah, this is it. I think it came out pretty nice. I hope y'all enjoyed the build. I hope y'all enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more.